So, Pat's been looking a little bit sad lately. We've got radius arm bushes that you would have seen in the diff video that are cooked. That front coil is sagging like no tomorrow. I don't think I've gained that much weight. Uh, so, the car is sitting. It's a little bit hard to see, but it is sitting on a little bit of a lean. Driver's side down, it sits heaps nice on this side. And then when you come over this side, it's fair way lower down. Apart from the coil, shock bushes stuffed front and rear. Shocks aren't the greatest. If you checked out the front diff video with my mate Aaron, the radius arm bushes are non-existent. I'm starting to get death wobbles now, so they need to be changed as well. And just in general, some of the bits and pieces just starting to get your wear and tear being about 280,000 Ks now. And I guess just it is what it is, it's getting on. So in saying that, we're gonna give Pat a bit of a birthday. So this spiraled out of control hard <laughs> um, and I kind of just let it happen at the end. So originally I was like, okay, we need new coils out the front. I'll just buy two new coils. And then I was like, oh, but it works out better just to get a set of four. So I don't have to do the rear, you know, could be a couple months, could be a year down the track, we don't know. And then I was like, oh, but the coils, there's a good deal you can get with shocks. And I was like, oh yeah, the shocks, you know, they need doing. And obviously the radius arms and one thing led to another and uh, my wallet didn't like it very much. But here we are and uh, I'm going to show you what we've got. This is probably the most keen I've been in a while. This is going to be sick. Um, I can't even explain how excited I am to actually get this on the car and go for a wheel. I think it should transform how the car rides on and off the road. Um, and bear in mind, I am on apprentice wages, so yes, I could have gone out and bought all the superior catalog, but that just wasn't an option for me. So 50% of this is from Facebook Marketplace, so that saved me a bit of coin. But in saying that, I still got quality stuff. And then the other 50% I've just bought new because I couldn't find that on Facebook Marketplace while I was looking over the last couple months. But I'll show you what I've got and I'm really stoked to get it on the car. So, here we are. It looks like a lot when you laid it all out, but when you're meeting people in car parks to buy stuff one thing at a time, it doesn't look that bad. I've got the full kit here. This is basically to do everything. I'm gonna put all the links in the description for the parts that I got, because I know I'm gonna have about a million comments asking me what I'm using. But uh, we'll start with the shocks and we'll go through there. So out of everything, the shocks is probably the most amount of money I spent, but that was for good reason. I didn't want to cheap out on those, so I bought those brand new. I went with comp shocks, the 2.0s for the patrol. It's for a suits a two inch lift. So the front is an eight inch shock with remote res, and it's also got eight clicks of adjustment. And then the rear, we've got a 10 inch shock with remote res again and eight clicks of adjustment. They should ride really well from the reviews I've seen so only time will tell and then you've just got all the stuff there the boots um, just the clips and whatnot the remote reservoir mounting brackets then we've got the Facebook marketplace specials so I got the Dobbinson's Panhards with new bushes I got them at a really good price really cheap I also got the radius arms for free with the caster correction bushes already in there so I didn't even need to do that um, below that, tie rod, drag link, just all heavy duty stuff. And then I also got heavy duty um, rear arms, uh, lower arms. They're just standard length, they're not adjustable. Then I've got superior heavy duty upper control arms. Don't mind the paint job, I tried painting zinc and I realized I'm an idiot. But uh, it's all come off, but they were second hand as well with all basically new bushes. Um, and that one's bent because it allows for the long range tank. Then with the travel shocks I'm running, I had to buy longer brake lines. So we've got the two for the front and the one for the rear. Then I've got the core retainers and the dropout cones since I'm only running the two inch coil. I'm gonna try out the 80 series bump stops. I've heard good things, but um, I just wanna see how they go. And then they're the extended sway bar links, front and rear, cause I'm definitely still gonna be running sway bars, wanna keep everything legal. And then with the coils, I actually got them in a combo with the shocks. So they're just a two inch Dobbo coil, nothing special, one to keep it legal. Everything suits a two inch lift. That's everything. I'm gonna shut up now, cause you didn't 
come to watch his video for me to speak. He came to watch putting cool parts on a cool car. So we'll get started. This is our current situation. My driveway is on a bloody slant. So I've had to jack up the front to be higher than the rear. Otherwise uh, my handbrake goes bye bye. So one side at a time, my jack's also shit itself, which is always great. So we're down to the bottle jack, but um, I'm just gonna undo the sway bar and brake line so I can get those, we'll drop the diff down and then get the coils out and then we'll just go from there. We're on Struggle Street as per usual. So managed to get the rear brake line off, the flare nut that goes up here, stuffed. One of the flare nuts that go on here is also stuffed. The other side I managed to get out, even though I was using a, a brake line spanner, but it is what it is. So that's the new brake line there. And it is heaps longer, as you can see. And the other issue we came into was that the sway bar, the bolt snapped or was seized. So I cut it off with the grinder. So that was fine. And then now I went to undo the bump stops and the bolt snapped off in there. Bear in mind, I WD'd 40 everything beforehand. But uh, we've got our little friend here and I reckon that should help us get it out. Probably better ways of doing that. <laughs> so, yeah. New spring, old spring, same size. Had a heart attack because I labeled the boxes wrong and I opened the fronts and I was like, why are they not the same? But that's just me being a dickhead. New one's gonna go in. Um, they look identical, so I imagine they're probably the same load rating, but we'll see. And the shock differences are pretty obvious. Shouldn't have to explain it. One's remote res with adjustment, other one's just a normal shock, and yeah, pretty big difference. Should look schmicker. So, it is night time now, but a bit of an update of where we're at. So, up this end with the lower control arm, I ended up having to flip this bolt around. That's a new bolt, I had to cut the old one out just because I did not want to drop my sliders. That would have been an absolute nightmare. Um, because one of the bolts for the sliders is through the chassis and that took ages to put in. So that's the remnants of the bolt there that we cut up. But new one's in now, just finger tight. I can't get this end in um, because I need the diff to move forward a bit more. 80 series bum stops on, which is nice. Core retainers up in there. I had to drill the holes to actually fit because they didn't fit just don't go there don't ask um, and then that's the upper control arm in there real nicely and I also have just mounted the top of the shock in there still gonna mount the remote res not really sure where um, but obviously I can't put the bottom in because the diffs hanging way too low and I bought a new jack so I could get the diff way lower so now when I put the new spring in it should be able to go in super easy but yeah this is taking way longer <laughs> than I expected still learning a lot that's why I haven't really been filming much on this side but um now that I've done most of this side I'm gonna whack the coil in and then when we get to the other side I'll be able to do a bit of a time lapse and hopefully get more footage there hopefully it'll be a lot easier because I kind of know the order of things I have to do it in now so we're getting there. Righto, so this side is basically done. Arms, springs, shocks up in there. I've mounted the remote res up here. I'm not really happy with where I've mounted it, but I couldn't find another spot and I just want to get it like hanging in there kind of thing for now. But um, if you do have a good spot that you've mounted yours, please put it in the comments or just let me know. The hose isn't actually long enough to run underneath where the tow bar is. So the mount's gonna have to be somewhere around there, around the fuel tank. And it's gonna be accessible because I got my little adjuster on there. And I almost forgot core retainer in there as well. Because we don't want those bloody coils popping out.
And I thought I'd just put the arms side by side so you can see the comparison between the standard ones and just an aftermarket heavy duty ones. They're just heaps thicker, got a lot more weight in them, bigger sidewall I'm guessing, so probably a lot stronger and hopefully don't break anything. And this is what I was talking about, about these hats. So that's the dropout cone and don't worry the permanent marker I've done, but the holes don't line up which is ridiculous. That's what I was going on about before. So I've marked out my own holes, so when they do go together, beautiful, just like that. Righto, so that's this side basically all done. Last thing I have to do is my sway bar links. There's actually a really good video on that, so I'm not gonna show myself doing that. But uh, if you just look it up on YouTube, that guy does it really well. So that's the last thing to do. Pop on my ABS lines. Need a plugger in there. Put the wheel back on, we're all sweet. So I just put off the pan hard. Got the heavy duty Dobbinson one and the factory one there. You can see the difference. The heavy duty one's just a lot thicker. And it does have this curve in it, which kind of threw me off. But uh, apparently that's supposed to clear the diff or something like that. So we will whack the new one in. And by the looks of it, I'm going to have to adjust it. Because the new one is a lot longer than the old one. Even though it was supposed to be set up for a 2 inch lift. So the rear is officially done. I've put the tyres on. I'll get a better shot of underneath when it's not so bloody dark. But um, tyres are on. Sits pretty good. I've done up everything, um, all the bushes and stuff like that with the tires on the ground just so I can have the weight settled so all the bushes are settled. But that seems to be all sweet. So it has gotten pretty dark, but we're onto the front, which is good. So plan is I've basically taken um, the ABS off, brake lines off. I've just undone both top and bottom bolts for the shock pull that out and then hopefully after that I'll be able to drop the whole diff down. I've done the same thing on the other side so from the middle we'll drop the diff down and I'll be able to get my springs out and then we'll just go from there. So I'm undoing my shock tower bolts so I can take the shock tower off and I'll put the remote res through it just to, I think it's a cleaner way to run it. Now, I don't know if people have come up with this issue before, but that last bolt on the shock tower hits the bloody body. So if you know what I'm gonna do and you like Nissans, just uh, look away. Okay, so that's the springs and shocks done. That's how I've mounted the remote resi. Not really too happy with it. Same as the rear, but uh, that's just where I've put it for now because I wanted to get rid of these top hats because they were when I took them off, they were just heaps of shit in there. So I want to keep them off so I can clean them uh, when I go full driving. So that's where I've mounted the remote resi just on the back bolt of the top hat. But it seems pretty solid there. You've still got your little adjuster knob just up here. So 
not too bad. The wheel shouldn't hit or anything like that. Just got this zip die here in that other bolt hole just to hold the hose there. It doesn't seem to be rubbing too bad, but I think it's just a bit of a trial and error. But if anybody else has any ideas on where I can put them, please let me know or brackets or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's time to pack it up for tonight. I can't even speak and uh, I'll keep going tomorrow. So I've taken the driver's side radius arm out. That's the new one down here with the offset bushes, which I know aren't ideal, but I got them for free. And then that's the old one. If you saw the diff video, they're completely flogged. So glad to be swapping those out. Both brake lines are in, just gotta tighten them up. Both radius arms are in as well with the offset bushes. Now I've already popped off the ball joints for the tie rod and whatnot, so I just gotta take them off. Had to drop the drag lick obviously to get the radius arms out and we'll just swap them all over to the heavy duty stuff. And the last thing would be the sway bar at the back and to do the pan hard when the wheels are on the ground. And then we got the tie rod and drag link. I think I said them the other way around before, but you get what I mean. So you can just see they're just a lot thicker in diameter. So hopefully stronger. They weigh a bit more as well, but I guess that's what happens when you use thicker material. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna measure from the end of each bolt and just adjust them to the same as the factory ones and then I'll put them on the car. So after a bit of mucking around with the lengths, we've got everything all in there. Got little brake lines tucked up in there and over this side. So I have taken it through a couple little puddles. I got a bit excited, but uh, everything is in, drives bloody good. And last thing to do is go for a test off road. You'll also notice that I don't have a steering dampener. The old one was absolutely cooked. So just decide not to run one for now and we'll see how it goes. So I've come down to my local to show you the finished version of Pat. Um, this has taken a little bit longer than expected. I'll pop the clip up now of why that is. But now my clutch is all sorted. Show you the rest of the suspension. Um, had the wheel alignment, all that's done, and this is how it sits right now. So that's how it's sitting. It's quite level. Obviously the ground's a little bit uneven, but that's where we're at. It's a two inch lift all around. I did notice I have loaded up the rear a little bit and uh, it kind of does sag down a tiny bit with all the weight in the back. So probably gonna have to look at heavier duty springs for the rear, but uh, shocks are all in there. Rides really well off-road. I tend to turn the shocks down a little bit just to have um, a little bit more comfort with the drive. I know it is a bit dirty under here, but uh, it actually looks pretty factory, which is nice. I accidentally ripped off my bash plate. So if you had one of those back on, uh, then you probably couldn't tell anything's done. But with all the black, that's how I wanted it to look really factory. So it doesn't stand out at all. Only thing that stands out is those bloody coils. So yeah, I reckon it looks bloody good. Really happy with the outcome. The last thing to do is to test it out. So that's why I'm out here trying to find something to flex up on because not everybody has a forklift, like apparently everybody does on YouTube. But uh, try and find something for you and see how much flex we got. So my options are kind of slim around here because there's more bloody rubbish than there is hills. But um, parked it up along here, drops it roughly where the slider is. That wheel's like the ever so slightly off the ground, tiniest bit, uh, but pretty happy with that. Like it wasn't supposed to be for heaps of flex, just a bit more, more comfort to be honest. So that's how it's sitting. The front's a little bit harder. That sway bar really limits it up the front, but tucks nicely in the rear at least. Not too shabby. And then this is the front side. Again, pretty happy with it. No flex monster, but it does the job. That sway bar in the front definitely limits it. I reckon if I was to take that out, I'd get a little bit more, but 
we're all about being legal. So front and rear sway bars are gonna stay in. And yeah, that's basically the end of the suspension for the patrol for the meantime. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I catch you in the next one. Cheers.